The message that I want to share with you today, brothers and sisters, is a message that if you grab it, if I can get it across to you like it's in my head, you will walk away from this place today saying, how could we have been so misled? How could the world have been so misled? If too many people begin to digest the message that I'm about to share with you, then the powers that be will have to, of necessity, yes, yes. launch an offensive yes. to maintain their survival and control over the masses. Yes. That's right. That's right. There's a statement that says, and you shall know the truth. Yes. And the truth will make you free. Yes. I found out that Freedom is something that everybody says they want. But freedom is not something that everybody can handle. Unfortunately, some people need to be enslaved because it helps them to function better. And that's so tragic. The subject of the, the message today is And I chose these words carefully. The subject of the message today is the illegitimacy of a people called Jews. Now my research caused me to end up with a 26 page document. I tried to condense it down to three pages, and I ended up with five. So I'm going to move through this as quickly, but yet as slowly as I can, because you can't afford for this to get past your mind. you got to digest this, absorb it as I'm saying it. I want to tell y'all about a people who I have found in my sincere research to be the most recent people as a people on this planet. My research has revealed to me that a legitimate verifiable existence of these people cannot be found before the 6th century AD. Did y'all hear what I said? I didn't say 6th century BC. I said 6th century AD, meaning in the 500s. Before that, there is no evidence, documented evidence of their activity or behavior corporately as a people before the 6th century and as late as the 9th century. People are truly the Johnnies come late of the world's population. Now check this out, y'all. Yet, despite their recent arrival as a corporate ethnic entity within the space of a few hundred 
hundred years, these people have managed to become the most powerful people on the planet. <laughs> they are the principal controllers in the areas of finance. They own all the banks. They are the principal controllers in the area of government. In the areas of labor, law, entertainment, politics, history, maybe I should say his story, and religion. These people have seduced the world into being convinced of that which is not true. Let me say that again. These people who just came on the scene about 1100 years ago have seduced the world and convinced them into believing what is not truth. Lord have mercy. These people who have no idea whatsoever of their true origins have in fact written a history. They made up a history. They fabricated a history that's not only false, it also identifies them as God's chosen and blessed people above all the other races on the planet. Are y'all hearing me? In fact, their strategically designed propaganda has been so effective now check this out. Their strategically designed propaganda has been so effective that even races and cultures that are thousands of years older than them have adopted their fabricated stories as their own historicity. For the last 1100 years, these people have systematically duped, hoodwinked, brainwashed, and deceived the entire world with their lies until entire civilizations and cultures have been built. Yes. on the premises of the lies that they made up. Y'all yes, with me? Yes. The eponymous name, and again, what is an eponymy? An eponymy is when you identify yourself of the identity of someone who never really existed. The eponymous name that these people have chosen for themselves, which happens to be Jew, which comes from the word Judah. Actually, it was pronounced Judah because there was no J, so it was the Judaites or the Judites. And notice the, notice the similarity between Judah, Jude, Judas. Which means betrayer and deceiver. Good God Almighty. The eponymous name that they've chosen for themselves 
And check this out. And then they wrote a bogus origin yes. right. of their false identity. That identity again is Jews. Their program, their bogus program was so effective that they have also associated other bogus names with the word Jew. Other bogus name they created was Hebrew. From the eponymous identity of a so-called father of the Hebrew people called Abraham or Ibrahim, which never existed. And from a man named Eber, which never existed. They also created another eponymous identity called Israelites. From a man whose name was supposedly changed to Israel from Jacob, who also never existed. Now I'm going to drop something on y'all that a lot of people ain't going to like when they hear what I'm about to say. But there's a man who these people convinced us was a madman. These people that I'm talking about told us that this man was a satanic agent. He was a mass murderer. We believed it because they said so. Everybody say this, when you control literature, you control what people think. These illegitimate people called Jews convinced the world that a man named Adolf Hitler was a madman. And we all grew up Right. Understanding that Hitler was a tyrant, that he was a madman. But I'm going to be honest with you. Well. After doing some research on this, right. I found out, and this is my opinion, mm-hmm. that it was these liars uh-huh. and deceivers. Right. Adolf Hitler was trying to cleanse the world of. That's just my little humble opinion. You see, a lot of y'all don't know this, but Adolf Hitler studied the philosophical concepts of the North African people. had come to realize the theft of African historiography by these deceivers, by these illegitimate caucasoids who took on the identity called Jews. Hitler adopted one of the oldest symbols of God consciousness on this planet. It's called the swastika. We have come to hate the swastika because we've been taught by these people that the swastika is a symbol of Nazi Germany. That's not true. Now let me take you to school right for a minute here. If you look at the first of all, the swastika comes back to us from ancient Egypt, 10,000 years BC. And if you look at the swastika, what you will see, those of you of the craft, you will see four squares. Representing 90 degree angles. You multiply four times 
90. You come up with a perfect circle of 360 degrees. Which represents the sun, the giver of life. So the swastika was actually an ancient comedic symbol that represented God consciousness. <laughs> Representing Amin Ra or God's son. Now I know a lot of folk who hear this ain't gonna like what I'm saying. I really don't give a damn. <laughs> My job is to tell you the truth, like it or not. If you don't like it, do what you feel you got to do, but I'm going to tell it. Because when I stand before the creator, I'm going to hold my head up high and say, I open the eyes of the blind by telling them the truth that they didn't want told. Now Hitler has been portrayed by these people as a madman. But then guess what else, y'all? They also portrayed Manuel Noriega as a madman. They also, the same people, portrayed Saddam Hussein as a madman. And you know what? We all listened to them and took their word for it. They tried to portray Idi Amin as a madman. They tried to portray Kwame Nkrumah as a madman. And anybody else that they can't control. Ain't it ironic they ain't portraying George Bush <laughs> as a madman. Now, if there's somebody mad on this planet, that's who it is. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it would be an exercise in futility and inconsiderate of your intellectual vigilance. Vigilance, I'm sorry, on my part to attempt to explain to you the biblical origins of such eponymous identities as Jews being the offspring of a so-called progenitor named Judah or Hebrews coming from a fictitious character named Abraham or Ebra or Israelites being the offspring of some so-called God progenitor named Jacob within the context of this message it would be an outright insult for me to try to use the very stories that these people made up to tell you about who they really are. So if you don't mind, I would like to lean today for my thesis on historical fact. Let's not go to the literature that they gave us in the first place. Let's go to history. Let, let history speak to us today. Mm, mm, mm. See, I can't use the Bible on this one. Because they gave us the Bible. I can't use the Talmud or the Torah or the Zendavesta or the, or the Quran on this one. Because they gave us all this. Remember, if you control literature... You control what a people think. So in today's message, I want to simply expose some essential facts about these historical caucasoids. All right. Known as, and these are, these are the two words you need to put together, do your own homework on it. The first word is Khazar. Yes, Spelled K-H-A-Z-A-R. Mm -hmm. The Khazars... And the other group is called the Ashkenazim. Khazar again is K-H-A-Z-A-R. S if you want for plural. Those are the Russian Caucasoids that took on the identity of being Jews. You had some German Caucasoids that took on the identity of being Jews. They were called the Ashkenazim. Spelled A-S-H-T. 
K-E-N-A-Z-I. Put an M on it for plural. Let me first tell you about the Ashkenazim. The Ashkenazim or the Ashkenazi or the German Jews. Ashkenazim is the general definition applied to the heterogeneous branch of European Jews. It referred in origin to the Jews dwelling in the land of Ashkenaz. Now let me show you how deep this is. They put it right here. Because in Genesis, the 10th chapter, it tells you that one of the sons of the so-called progenitor of white folk, Japheth, yeah. one of his sons in Genesis 10 and 3, it says, and the sons of Gomer is Ashkenaz, uh -huh. which today is Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Yiddish became the official tongue of the Ashkenazim. It was from Germany that they migrated eastward and reached Russia or the land of Khazaria where we get the word Khazar from. Now check this out, y'all. These people are so powerful that they have falsified medical records and created bogus DNA reports that says that the Ashkenazim Jews are the direct descendants of Jacob. Wow. Well, Pastor, how you know they falsified the medical reports? Because Jacob never existed. Uh -huh. So how you going to be a descendant of somebody who didn't exist? Mm -hmm. But as a part of their program for world control, mm -hmm. they made up this story that we call the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow this. I'm talking about the people who just got here. A people who never existed, but they wrote themselves into existence. That's some deep stuff. They literally wrote themselves into existence and then made themselves pre-existent of what already existed. said that what already existed came from them because the Bible says salvation is of the Jews we've all been taught those of you who study theology we've all been taught that God's program of salvation for mankind was first extended to the Jews that's right because a few Jews did not believe in Jesus Christ. Y'all see this? That it literally opened up the door for the Gentiles to be saved. And when the appointed number of Gentiles accept the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved, then God is going to come back and the Bible says, so all Israel will be saved. Do y'all follow this? The origin of the Khazars and their earliest history is unknown before the 6th century. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up for yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They cannot establish a legitimate existence before the mid 500s AD. Yeah, yeah. Well, brother, where were they? They were nomadic, yeah. barbaric, yeah. animalistic, yeah. white folk yeah. running around in the mountains of Europe. Yeah. Who decided that 
they didn't want to be Christians, follow this. Because the Roman Catholic Church existed at this time. They didn't want to be under the auspices of Rome. And they didn't want to be under the auspices of the Sheik or Muslims. So how can they exist as a power? They went into Africa. And saw our story. Copied it. Let's go back. First they stole it. Copied it. Plagiarized it. And then wrote themselves into it. And not only did they write themselves into it. But they twisted it to say that they were once captive in Egypt. Under the hands of a cruel pharaoh. And God sent plagues into Africa to make Pharaoh let these liars go. Y'all see this thing? know that there was no exodus until I went to Egypt and did my own field research. There is no record of some Hebrews ever being led out of Egypt by a man named Moses. That story is in their made up fabrication, their lie, their Torah, their Bible, and their Quran. Ah, shucks, I got to tell it. According to their own records, they are descendants from Tagama. Again, 10th chapter of Genesis. Another name they made up. Everybody say this with me to the top of your voice. When a people do not have a past, they must create myth to supplement the facts of their existence. You got that? These people can't tell you their history because they ain't got none. The world had blossomed when they came out of the caves of the mountains, the Caucasus Mountains. Why you think they're called Caucasians? Because they came out of the Caucasus Mountains. Now y'all dig this. In the year 861 AD. What year did I just say? 861 AD or ACE after the common era. The Khazarian king named Bulan, B-U-L-A-N, officially adopted the stolen, plagiarized copy, bogus religion that they made up and called it Judaism. In 861. What's really deep is, now let me show you how, 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 powerful a lie is. These people own the newspapers. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And it's deep when you tell a lie to the world and you know that your lie has become so effective that you can now turn around and tell them the truth knowing it's too late for them to do anything about it. purpose for sharing this message is not to try to do anything to them or change them. Their program is in place. My purpose for telling you this message is so that you'll drop this mess you've been believing in. Because the thing that makes them powerful is the fact that the world believes their story. The New York Times October 29th 1996 
The October 29, 1996 issue of the New York Times reveals that, and I quote, European descended Jews are counterfeits. And a major newspaper tells you that. And it goes on to say, and they have no bloodline to Abraham. Now I know they ain't got no bloodline to Abraham because Abraham didn't exist. It goes on to say, and I quote, the fact that most of those who call themselves Jews are not Jews and have no claim to the lands of Palestine because they have no genetic relation to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can no longer be suppressed. It goes on to say, scholars, this was the headline, scholars debate the origins of Yiddish and the migration of the Jews. Stating or saying, arching over these questions, is the central mystery of just where the Jews of Eastern Europe came from. You see, the Ashkenazim placed their energy into what would come to be known as the biblical text. Yeah. Centers for rabbinic scholarship came into existence in the 10th century. The first major Ashkenazi literary figure was a man named Rashi. Wow. R-A-S-H-I. also known as Solomon ben Isaac. Now check out this, Solomon ben Isaac lived 1,040 to 1105. You, have, you see how recent I'm talking here? I didn't say 3,000 years ago. I'm talking 1,000 years ago. And his commentaries Rashi or Solomon ben Isaac, his commentaries on biblical and Talmudic literature are considered today as mandatory study among the Jewish children. Among the Jewish children. Among the Jewish children. How do you get this program into the minds of the world? Put it into the children. Make up the lie and then teach it to the children as the truth. And when these children grow up, they will be convinced that what they're saying is in fact real. The Jews even had their own craft guilds. Each kahal had a yeshiva where boys over the age of 13 learned the Talmudic and rabbinic text. And that's going on right now today. All you got to do is go out here in your city. And you'll see it going on big time. I remember, and Mentua is right here, he can bear witness. I remember one day, we, arrived, we went up uh, um, uh, Olive, I think it's Olive, Boulevard there. First we went up Del Mar to some Jewish study center. I don't know the cross street there, and uh, it was a center for Jewish studies. And I said, Mentuotep, let's stop in here for a minute, because I want to ask them something. <laughs> and we pulled in and went inside and they saw these two black men stepping up in there and everybody got all defensive. And I said, I'm interested in whatever literature you have on Yahshua ben Pandira. Black folk ain't supposed to know about this. They looked at me and Mentuotep and said, we don't have anything for you here. This is a center for our people. Now that's some deep stuff because if we did that to them, we'd lose our tax exempt status. So I said, Mentor Tip, all right, let's let's go. There's another place on Olive, a Jewish bookstore there. So we went in there. And I stepped in and I said, I'm interested in material that you have on Yahshua ben Pandira. He 
looked up into a temple and I saw two big bald headed black men. Mentor Tepper, he's sitting right there, he'll bear witness. Every time we rode past that store for the next several months, that man would follow us with his eyes down the street. They cannot allow their lie to be exposed. But we're going to expose it. Got to set this people free. By the end of the 19th century, how recent did I just say? By the end of the 19th century, there was massive Ashkenazim migration from Eastern Europe to other parts of the world. These people had a program and agenda for world domination. Y'all with me? They migrated to Australia. They migrated to South Africa. They migrated to the United States. They migrated even to a place called Israel. Claiming that it was their land. Because they convinced the world about that lie because they made it up. The Ashkenazim began to influence social customs everywhere, follow this, follow this, except North Africa. Yeah. Italy and the Middle East. Why didn't they have influence in North Africa, Italy, and the Middle East? Because North Africa was the birth place of civilization. Too much evidence is there. That's where they stole the information to create their lie in the first place. And now North Africa is under Islamic thought. They didn't have much influence in Italy either. Why? Because the Vatican is in Italy. Rome Before World War II, the Ashkenazim comprised 90% of the Jewish, so-called Jewish people of the world. Wow. Let me give you some definitions. <clears throat> How many of y'all have ever heard of the word Hebrew? All right. <clears throat> a Hebrew, by definition, is a person belonging to the worldwide group claiming descent from Jacob. An Israelite or a Jew. Again, from the word Judah, Jude, Judas. Traitor or betrayer. The word Israelite, by definition, is the ethnic group claiming descent from Abraham and Isaac, especially from Isaac's son, Jacob. These are supposed to be the people whom God has chosen to be his own particular and special people. I guess, you know, I can understand it, y'all. If I was writing myself into history, I would make myself God's chosen too. If I was writing myself into history, yeah, I would say that I'm special to God. And anybody that mess with me, God gonna kick your behind. If I was writing myself into history, I would tell y'all, if you bless me, God will bless you. If you curse me, God will curse you. Well, y'all, that's exactly what they did. This bogus history, this bogus his story of the Old Testament alone would reveal that the chosen people 
were descendants of a man named Israel. It's some deep stuff. Now let me prove my point. And I'm going to try to, I'm gonna try to expedite this because I'm losing my voice on this thing here. Everybody say stolen comedic philosophy, stolen philosophy. becomes the bogus Jewish religion. Y'all follow me? These nomadic, barbaric people, Caucasoids, who come out of the mountains with their beastly countenance. Some of them are beasts too. Stole their ideas for their story, their story from ancient Kemet. This bogus religion called Judaism that resulted in the creation of the Torah, the Talmud, and the Old Testament can be proven to have its roots in the philosophical system of ancient Kemet. For example, let's examine the teachings of Pharaoh Amenhotep the fourth. Now, Pharaoh Amenhotep the fourth of the fifth—I'm sorry, the seventeenth dynasty—was also known as Akhenaten. Y'all with me? Akhenaten is the author of some ancient scriptures known as the Amana Papyrus. Yeah. Now check this out. In fact, how many of y'all got Bibles with you? I'm going to read, turn your Bibles to the 104th Psalm. Now remember, what you're reading is what they made up. I want you to see where they stole this from. Now here we got a people who just came on the scene as late as the ninth century AD. They had to get a story of an ancient existence from somewhere. So if you got to steal a story of an ancient existence, where you going to go? To an ancient people. The Amarna Papyrus written by Pharaoh Akhenaten or Amenhotep IV says these words. Now, in fact, read for me Psalm 104. What does it say? I'm listening. Now go down to the 20th verse. What does it say? Thou makest darkness and what? It is night. Wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar. Y'all see this? Stop, stop, stop. You can follow me. The Armada Papyrus says these words. When you set in the western horizon of heaven the world is in darkness the next line of the Armana Papyrus says every lion comes forward from his den y'all see the, par the, the parallel here 
Psalm 104, what we just read, it says, the young lions roar after their prey. They seek their meat from God. The Amarna Papyrus goes on to say, the serpents all sting and darkness reigns. Light falls over the earth when you rise in the horizon. The two lands are in daily festival. Then all over the world they do toil. How fruitful are your works. They are hidden from your presence. He goes on to say, Oh, my only God, whose powers no other has, you alone created the earth as you desired, and alone all that are upon the earth. Now, I just read to you a text that dates back to 1,370 years B.C. And a people who just came into existence in the ninth century went and stole that information and put it right there in Psalm 104. Well, oh, let me provide you with a little bit more evidence for my thesis today. One of the basic tenets of Judaism doctrines is found in the so called first book of Moses. Now, y'all know we've been taught that Moses had five books, right? Those of you who are trained in Sunday school, what are those five books called? Start with a P. The Pentateuch, five books of the law. And they told us that Moses wrote this stuff. Moses ain't wrote squat. You know why? Moses never existed. They made up the name Moses from a great pharaonic Egyptian king known as Menkepen Ra Tehuti Mays, who the white man changed his name to Thutmosis. And they took Thutmosis and got rid of the Thut. <laughs> and created a figure called Moses that God supposedly sent to Pharaoh. Uh -huh. well. In their story, follow this, in their story, in the first book of Moses, also called Genesis, they said, they said that God said. Yeah. I always wanted to understand that anyway. Yeah. How in the world you know what God said? Who was there when he said it? According to them, they said that God said. Look at the person next to you say, that's he say, she say stuff. <laughs> that God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him how do they know that wow. think black people you see they can't tell you the origins of their existence so they had to create a story of God making a white man called Adam. Yeah. Yeah. See, Adam is the beginning of their myth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Adam had some sons and some daughters, and if you trace all through the lineage, you come up to a man called Jesus. who was supposedly a Jew. Uh -huh. Ah, buddy. Y'all understand what I'm saying here? I mean, do you really understand what is, what's happening? Think back for a moment. Just take 15 seconds and process this thing and look at how many 
many of your parents and grandparents and great grandparents believed this lie that they made up. They lived and defended and died in a lie. made sense to them. That's why the only joy that they could get out of it was what's going to happen over in glory land. Good God Almighty. When I get over in glory, how good it's going to be because I'm putting all my hope in this story that I've been told and it just ain't working. So maybe it'll work after I die. Good God from Zion. And the people that made up this lie, these illegitimate, bogus caucasoids who call themselves Jews, Believe it themselves. But then again, they ain't trying to believe it. They want you to believe it. While they own, while they own the banks, you believe the lie. While they control the media, you believe the lie. While they control your children's future, you believe the lie. Is this making sense? Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Because every Sunday, Mentul Tep and I sing on the radio. Get up, get up, get up. It's time to get up now, Africans. Yes. Does anybody have their copy? I'm going to close this with the cry of Marcus Garvey. Anybody got your copy of Psychic Trauma? <clears throat> let, me, let me see your copy there, Elder. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I want to read something for you. On page 345 of the book Psychic Trauma, if you don't have your copy of this, we have them in the Information Center. 345 of Psychic Trauma, the bottom paragraph. Those of you who have your copy, say Ashe. Ashe. Good. I want y'all to read this with me. Page 345, bottom paragraph written in italics. If you have it, read with me. Here's what it says. The great white man has succeeded in subduing the world by forcing everybody to think his way. Y'all see this? Notice what it goes on to say. He has given to the world from the Bible to his yellow newspaper sheet a literature that established his right and sovereignty to the disadvantage of the rest of the human race. Am I losing you? Let me read that one part one more time. It says, this white man, this caucasoid, this, this liar, this deceiver, <laughs> has given to the world from the Bible to his newspaper a literature that establishes his right and sovereignty to the disadvantage to the rest of the human race. I'm talking about a people who just got on the scene. 
read the next paragraph. What does it say? The white man's propaganda has made him master of the world. Stop, stop. The mess that he made up has made him master of the world. And check out this next line. And all those who have come in contact with it, meaning the white man's propaganda, and accepted it becomes his slaves. Shots! How many of you sitting in this room came in contact with the white man's propaganda? Every hand in this room ought to be raised. Some of y'all live in his propaganda. Some of y'all will still give your life to defend his propaganda. From his Bible to his newspaper. It says, if you've come in contact with it and accepted it, you become his slave. And I'll tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. How many of y'all accepted his propaganda? You know you did. We went to school. Not only did we accept it, we went to school and got degrees in it. And want to know why we as a people are in the condition we're in. Now, I got to do this. I close this message with the same plea that Marcus Garvey put out several decades ago. At the top of page 346, what does Marcus Garvey say? The Universal Negro Improvement Association. That was the name of his organization. And by the way, how the white man tore it down is he planted black folk around Marcus Garvey to bring him down. Marcus Garvey's administrative assistant is the one who brought him down. He trusted the sister. And she worked for the system. Stuff he was supposed to be sending out never got sent out. And that gave them grounds to charge him with mail fraud. That's how they got him. Over some simple little dumb stuff like that. Universal Negro Improvement Association is now calling upon the four million members of our race. I'm sorry, thank you. 400 million members of our race. Now here's where I'm repeating that clarion call. I'm asking you Africans and everybody that hears my voice if you're on the internet, if you're on television, if you're listening to this by tape, whatever, I'm asking you to read it with me. Discard the psychology and propaganda of all other people and to advance our own. Propaganda. I know you think you get joy out of it. What you get is anesthetization out of it. It doesn't deliver you. 
it puts you to sleep. You running and getting happy because you don't feel nothing. Doggone it. Your son is dying from drugs. And you've been anesthetized by their propaganda. I remember talking to a brother who said, Pastor, I went to my mother for help, who's a missionary. And when I went to her, she looked at me and said, God delivered Daniel from the lion's den. <laughs> and in tears, he said, Mama, can't you see I'm in a lion's den? Don't tell me about some Daniel. Tell me how to get out of my lion's den. I'm trying to tell you Africans what we got to do to get ourselves out of the lion's den that they made for us. We got to discard the psychology and propaganda that they gave to us. I know it's painful. I know it's painful for you. It hurts, as you heard the preacher say a little earlier, at almost 50 years old, to come into the realization that everything you've been standing on is a lie. That hurts. But I'm so glad you found out, brother, before you closed your eyes. I'm so glad I found out before I closed my eyes. We got to get this message out to our people. Y'all, I'm willing to die for this. I have no other reason for breathing but to get this message across to my people. And those of you who are agents, who sitting up in here listening to me, make yourself comfortable. I know you got a job to do. You do your job, I'm gonna do mine. I'm going to set as many of my people free as I can. And then when I die and they bury me, I'm going to turn over and tell you to, you know. Because I've done my job. I got children in here. I swear before God and the ancestors. I'm going to use every drop of energy that I have to see to it that these young people get right knowledge. Yes. Yes. Now, I got to say it to you because I'm feeling this thing here today. I ain't lying. If you can't get on board with that, then get the hell out of here. Oh. This. I hope you got something out of that message today, brothers and sisters. I really do. Um, I have to be honest with y'all. Uh, like I said, I don't hardly get to listen to myself, you know. Um, but as I was as I was sitting with you, listening to the message today, it's like, wow. Wow. All I can say is to the ancestors and to the Most High, thank you for rescuing me from the lie that I was in and not only rescuing me, but allowing me to be an instrument of truth to help set our people free. Yeah, I can understand it. And I was looking at a lot of the comments and I saw one person that stated that this video had been removed from YouTube. Well, I'm so glad I have all of these messages and you know um, in my archives and my goal is to digitize them and make them available for you guys to download them um you know so we're going to work on that this coming week or the following week uh maybe not this coming week i have eulogies to do this week Oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, I am so thankful. I, I'm, I'm I'm moved to tears here, man, because I am so thankful that um, I'm just glad to be an instrument 
one of the many instruments. There, there's some great teachers out there, you know, and uh, I'm honored to be just one of them, you know, that, that's here to make sure that our young people get the truth. I don't want my grandchildren and, and your children to grow up under the lies that we grew up under, you know? So please feel free to share this video. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button so that when I go live, you'll know I'm live, you know? We got work to do. <clears throat> We've come a long way, but guess what, y'all? We still got a long way to go, a long way to go, you know? And uh, hey, what can I tell you? I have to be honest with y'all. I'm a little, I'm, I'm stirred up today by my own message. I'm stirred up, man. You know, um, I'm stirred up here. Yeah. <clears throat> the power of the truth, you know, the knowledge of the truth will make you free. I was reading the comments that were being posted. Guys, thank you for the words of encouragement. <clears throat> thank you so much. I love you guys too. I murder you, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, buddy. 